today to you guys is I want to talk about a term called capacity, right? And building capacity and building an engine and being able to kind of push this threshold of exercise and running and work and life in general and how that actually builds a bigger engine, which actually will help you guys build resiliency and make more work feel easier, right? And if we can do more with less energy by building these habits and building capacity and building engine, we become more efficient and the chances of something actually sticking and connecting with and staying disciplined to that task becomes that much easier, right? So this is a big thing, and I'm gonna kinda of use this in relationship to exercise first. You know, there was a it was a podcast I was listening to the other day, and this lady said it really well. She was an ultra marathoner, and she says, every time that I go out to train, I try to, in my head, just think about that I'm carrying a chisel, and I'm working my way down to this pain cave, and I'm, deeping a, I'm digging a little bit deeper every single time, right? And what she was using that in reference to was basically that when we train, and specific to her for running, there's a point where you go on a run, your heart rate increases, your breath increases, and lactic acid starts to build up, and you start to feel the burn, you start to get tired, the legs get heavy, the lungs get hard to breathe through. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, some people like to use, the, I love this term too, is the word pain cave, which is basically when you get into the zone, how long can you stay there, right? In building capacity, is basically what that means is right is we're, we're building a, a capacity to be able to stay in the pain cave right and the person that she was interviewing or interviewing with whatever it was asked her was like does that mean that you hit the pain cave later or does that mean that you can stay in the pain cave longer and her answer was both right because you know the bigger that the engine is built and the more capacity that you have to work with Yes, it actually takes longer for your body to actually start building up that lactic acid burn, right? Actually, for your breathing to really get to a point where it's kicking up, or your heart rate, you know, all that management, obviously, over time with practice and repetition is how that threshold is built. So, yes, she was saying that, yeah, 100%, I can go longer without getting into the pain cave. But more importantly for her, she likes to know how long can I get into that pain cave and then stay there and continue to work, right? Um, and this is something that I love looking at high level athletes and this is honestly something for the endurance athletes that I have a huge respect for because it's one of the only things that you really get into this pain cave and you really start to tap into this mental spiritual side of training um, that I don't think bodybuilding and powerlifting and Olympic lifting necessarily get to all the time because you don't get into that zone of training ever. It's a, it's a power sport, right? Um, not to discredit that, it's just kind of a different concept in a sense. But also, if you look at the strength side, it's the same kind of scenario, but it's just like a different style of capacity, but the capacity to be able to lift more weights is when I squat 100 pounds and then I go to 105 and 150 and 200 or 300 or 400, you're building a capacity for how much that tissue can actually handle and how much stress and load that body can be able to withstand and take. Um, and that is you building an engine, that is you building capacity. Even though it's necessarily more relationship to strength, it's still building a capacity. Um, and then when we think about this in work, right? Something that I've said, I think in a couple podcasts previously was doing the boring work, being able to do the stuff that no one wants to do because all successful people are great at mastering the basics and continually doing the basics over and over versus amateurs are very good at staying busy and not productive. So can you do the stuff that sucks and how long and how much can you actually do that, right? So for you know a salesperson making sales calls and hunting for leads, yeah, it's the boring part. Everybody wants to do the sales and the fun stuff, right? You know, for our job here at Functional Lifestyles, doing the coaching of classes and being around people or doing check-ins and writing nutritional planning, like, you know, sometimes writing the workout on your spare time is not the fun stuff. Sometimes doing the reach out to get the appointment set up is not the fun part, but like, that's the boring work, right? And us doing these things that are maybe not as fun or more boring or hard, that allows us to build capacity, right? Um, and that's something that I think I deem is a really, really, really important thing for all people that want to have success in their goal long term is you have to build an engine, right? Like you have to build this capacity. You have to, you know, kind of push this threshold of what we're actually capable of doing. Because remember this, in all areas of life, when it comes to success, there is a fine threshold in every kind of different dimension and avenue that we work with. And our goal is to get on the other side of that threshold, right? Not crazy far past it, but just past it. Right, so when I start getting uncomfortable and I'm doing 20 rep squats and I get uncomfortable 15, I don't stop there or take the weight off, I push a little bit harder, right? So I can build a bigger engine, so I can get stronger, so I can build endurance. When I'm on a run and I'm you know, 25 minutes into it and my legs feel ungodly heavy, 
I don't stop and walk, we push a little bit harder, right? Now, obviously being very smart about this and calculated <laughs> is definitely the biggest goal here. I'm not saying be an idiot and just continually push hard because there's some people that uh, you know, don't necessarily have the brains and sometimes do that. We see that a lot with ego. So I'm not saying being idiot about this, I'm saying being very smart. But the idea of building that is a cool concept, right? Because here's why it's cool. It's kind of the same thing of the power of habits. Like when you, when you start anything new in life, starting a new habit is hard because it's new. Your brain, your body, there's a lot of energy that's actually required for your entire body to create a new habit. And this is why the hardest part of anything in life is starting new and starting over. Right, and this is why I always try to really kind of preach the consistency overall because it's not fun starting over. It's not fun training really good for three months and then taking a you know three four weeks off. And I unfortunately, as a business owner, see this all the time in the gym where people will be really consistent and then hey, I got some travel. You know what? Let's just freeze it for the month and I'll come back and they feel like they start over. And that has got to be the hardest possible thing that you could do for your own mental too. Not even just the physical side of training, but starting over is hard. But the cool thing about power of habits is, you know, things become easy once they become habitual, right? And remembering that, you know, over 50% of humans' lives are actually based out of habit. You know, like for me, I wake up in the morning and probably, you know, sleepwalking, I make my coffee in the morning, right? And that's because it's been a habit that I've created, right? Or whatever it is, habits take time to build, right? Which is this kind of same theory of the difference between habits and capacity and the relationship between both of them is over time, as we start to develop these habits, it requires less energy, Why? which is also why it makes it easier to stick to habits, right? Which is why it's the goal to kind of build in this consistency of habits, which is kind of the same theory of, yes, running's hard in the beginning because I have a very, very small engine, AKA capacity to be able to do so. Um, and this is why it's hard for people to do a lot in the beginning, which is also why I suggest don't do a lot in the beginning, that you really wanna focus on slowly ramping up in building a big bandwidth and building more capacity and building a big engine. Um, and as you start to develop the habits in some of these areas, you start to really make it easy to build a huge engine. So I think for most people inside of the gym, when you're looking to get strong and you're looking to get fast, you have to remember that you have to be tracking what you're doing in order to know what that line of that threshold will be, right? Guessing your threshold um, will give you some level of success, but the longer that you do this and the more consistent you are, the more the details actually matter. Um, and it's the same thing with work. I think there's a lot of people that, you know, think that, you know, this is, you know, more so now than ever. So I'm like looking to hire, for example, right now. And there's, I feel like there's been a little bit of a shift over the years in the last couple of decades of people looking at not just being, you know, a job that pays money, but also trying to find the right culture with the right people and the right, you know, industry and then the right model within the industry, um, which is cool. Cause I think that's obviously a very, very important thing. But any job you get in, you gotta remember that there's a lot of parallels to what you do. And a lot of us, you know, from what I see, are just trying to find this path of least resistance and the easiest thing. And they think that, oh, going to a new job or getting a new boyfriend or starting at a new gym or starting at a new diet, these are all gonna be things that are just gonna make it easier. When in case, it's the exact opposite. That's the hardest way to live because every single time you start over, you have to recreate new habits. You have to rebuild more capacity, you have to build an engine, you have to build the discipline back. Um, and that makes it really, really hard for anybody to stay consistent, right? So when you think about building capacity and you think about building this engine and building these habits, it comes back to that same thing I was talking a few weeks ago. It comes back to the consistency of what you're doing and understanding that it's not going to be easy, right? If it was easy, everyone would be rich. Everyone would have a six pack. Everyone would be lighter lifting 400 pounds. Everyone would be running a five minute mile. Like that's not the case, right? Like everything that requires work um, or anything that's really a nice, pretty looking goal is gonna require obviously a lot of work to get there. So focus on that when you look at building capacity and building engine that a little bit all the time is a better than a lot at one time, right? And I think a lot of people have this misconception around the gym and training that like, okay, I'm gonna go as hard as I can now that I have the time and then, and then I'm off and then I'm back on and then I'm off, then I'm back on. That is a way to just literally ruin engine and ruin capacity. The consistency is gonna be that breadwinner for that one. So I know I wanted to keep kind of today a little bit shorter because I wanted to just kind of I was a thought of mine with a client that I had a conversation with that when she was talking about like training and running and the combination of the two things she does, are they conflicting within each other because capacity for strength and capacity to aerobic stuff are different. And the, the case is what I told her, it's like, 
yes, they're all different, but at the end of the day, it's the same model, it's the same theory, it's the same approach. If you want to get good at work, you want to get better in your relationship, you want to be a better friend or a better son or daughter or whatever it is you're trying to do, you have to do enough of the same things and try to find that smart approach of just breaking the threshold just enough to give you the result that you want and have the recovery, obviously, that it's needed. And over time, that capacity builds, right? We're digging a little bit deeper into the pain cave, right? And the deeper we get, the longer it takes to get until you enter that point of pain, of that point of discomfort, of that point of like boredom, right? Because there's gonna be so many things in life that require repetition. And instead of looking for that shiny object syndrome all the time, let's focus on being disciplined enough on the work that we know we're supposed to be doing and just hacking away at the little stuff all the time because these little micro wins and the little consistency that you have around your diet, your training, your lifestyle and everything else are the things that are going to give you the big macro result. So a lot of us like to think about, you know, like her, my client's question was basically like, should I stop doing this so I can get better at this? And if you wanted to put all your eggs into one basket for a specific goal, sure, that's the best way if you only want to make that thing good. But most people that I talk to, and obviously just relationship to the stories I work with, a lot of people want to be able to do a lot of things well. And that's, and I am the same way. This is where Pursuit of Balance came from for me. So remember, you can do all of it. Focus on the long-term success. Focus on building that capacity and engine. Focus on breaking that threshold every single week or every single month. It doesn't need to be a daily thing, right? But breaking that threshold ever so often so that threshold gets pushed up higher and higher. So you're building a taller ceiling, right? Which is building a bigger engine and it makes everything that you are doing that much easier over time. So instead of starting over and focusing on X and then quitting that and then focusing on Y, um, that is probably one of the easiest ways to start over, make things hard, and never really build a huge engine. So if your goal in life is to be able to do a lot with a lot or with a little effort, then the goal should be consistency on building threshold and pushing and breaking it, building an engine, building capacity, and then just focus on the long term with everything you do, right? All right, guys, well, I wanted to keep that one short, just a little kind of a little word of advice of the conversation I had. As always, have a great rest of your week. Next week, I'll come back to you guys on Friday. We'll talk then. See ya.